All right, welcome back to another episode of Travel Ball Talk. I'm your host, Rich Prado, owner of Play in School. Today, we're going to go along with uh, Coach Cliff Brumball of Oklahoma Fuel Baseball as he walks his dog. So if you guys hear some barking or some growling, we're along with, with, with Cliff on his dog walk today, man. Cliff, well, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, sir? You, you and I have Glad connected. A, yeah, hey, you and I have connected a couple times in the past. Um, and, but I'm, but I'm anxious and excited to learn as much as we can about the OK Fuel you know, and about your past, your journey. Uh, and, and you know, I was just pulling up a map. It looks like you guys are based Edmond, Oklahoma, which is a suburb of Oklahoma City. So you guys at home, um, you know, you can pull up a map. Oklahoma City looks like it is dead middle of a big old state. Um, Cliff, um, take why don't you why don't you take over and give us give us your your baseball background. Walk us, you know, and don't take us all the way back to five you know five year old t ball season, but but give us a little bit of your background and how the OK Fuel came to be, and and then uh, catch us up to uh, you know to to modern day. Well, uh, let's see. I uh, wrapped up my career in 2011. Uh, played 16 years professionally. Drafted by the Rangers. Uh, uh, made it to the big leagues with the Rangers, the Rockies. And then played seven years overseas in Korea and Japan. Uh, once I got done uh, playing, I pretty much knew exactly what I wanted to do as far as pass the game along to the younger generation. And uh, see if we can't keep the game going the way I wanted it to go, pretty much. So uh, we opened up Oklahoma Fuel in 2000. I can't. I don't even know when we opened it up. Actually, 12 years ago, uh, and started out with a couple teams, and then just started growing. That's I'll, pretty much it. I want to. I want to hear the second. The second you said you went over overseas, my uh, my ears perked up. Not to, okay. not to, uh, you know, not to gloss over your, uh, your, your MLB experience. I mean, that's, that's pretty awesome. We've had, you know, there's, there's, that's a, that's a pretty, uh, pretty exclusive club. Um, but I think, I think a lot of people have heard a lot of those types of stories in the past. <laughs> I, I, I'm curious about how, how do you even end up in, in Korea how do you end up in Japan? Like, what what what's yeah. that all about? Like, some uh, some some owner over there calls you up and is like, "Hey, why don't you come over here?" No. So what they do is they'll they'll come and they'll they'll come scout the state. So they'll have they'll have some bird dogs over here, some Americans that usually play that have played for them or something like that. Mm-hmm. That'll give them some word, and then they'll send some guys over to come watch you play. So they came and watched me play when I was in. I was with I was with Charlotte, the White Sox, and I mean they traveled. They came to about four series in a row, and then you know like what they saw, and then offered me a contract. And at that time, you know I was bouncing up and down and wasn't stable as far as uh, where I thought I needed to be. So they offered me a number I couldn't turn down, and mm. I just took I took it and and uh, went with it. Pretty much, I had just just had our first son, so just trying to make the, make a right decision, and I feel like we did as far yeah. as family goes. Uh, it, it, were you were you playing in that uh, new downtown stadium in Charlotte, or is that was that constructed after you? Oh, the old one. The old one. Okay, yeah, the, the new the one. one. The new one's beautiful. I was there a couple of years ago. Oh yeah, absolutely beautiful downtown. You got the whole skyline right there. Like basically, yeah. I mean, you're in downtown. It's awesome. Um, oh, I hear. That's what I hear. Same with Tulsa. Tulsa. I played in Tulsa in '98. Their stadium was cr- trash, and then they got they just built a new one a few years ago. Same thing. That's cool. Same thing. Um, yeah. So, so they come. So you 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 basically felt like, hey, my my uh my stateside career in pro ball is unstable and they gave you an an opportunity at stability with a guaranteed paycheck and you're just like hey I got a young family this is a this is a great move from a from a financial standpoint now you 
you fly halfway around the world and land what what was what was that like when you hit when your feet hit the ground over there uh excited actually actually it was <laughs> it was uh pretty interesting because i landed there i think i got in and i think my hotel was about about an hour and a half away from the airport and i think i got in around 10 p.m and i had dinner with the owner and then the next morning i had to fly out at 7 to japan to go get my working visa so i spent the day up there all day and then came back and then flew out the next morning to where they were playing so it was a racket honestly <laughs> so i was kind of i was uh feeling it a little bit as far as jet lag and you know i was getting a little nervous not speaking their language but it all worked out it all worked out i mean i played in i played in uh dominican venezuela so i've been all over not not speaking the language and, and did pretty good so and, and I mean, the thing is, is like if you if you show up and contribute and either get hits or 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 prevent people from getting hits, guess what? You're gonna be uh, you're gonna be well uh, well taken oh, yeah. care of. Oh yeah, I spent I spent five years in Korea and two in Japan, so I had a pretty good following in both of them. That's a, that's a, and they love sports over there. Let me tell you. That's they a love very a very cool experience. Uh, uh, that yeah, it was that so few people will will get to experience. Now, you obviously you recommend that for 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 a, you know a ball player going through today. Uh, well, it all depends. I mean, it depends on how you are as far as um, leaving, not being home as much, not speaking the language. I loved it. I mean, I didn't have a problem with it. I mean, a lot of pressure on you for. For you to do well, if not, you're they'll release you. Yeah. So you you know, there's a lot of pressure on you going over there and you know, they don't want you to they might it might seem like they want you to do well, but a lot of guys on the team rather you not. I, my personal opinion sometimes, just because they're you know, you're a foreigner coming in and taking a chance for them to play and Well, uh, I, I think other I think, than that, they were pretty cool. I think you could say the same thing about it. Back back here, if you're if you're in minor oh, yeah. if you're in minor league baseball, well, sure yeah. you want to win tonight, but you're competing with every other guy on that team. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 good though. But then you know what they're saying though when you're over <laughs> when you're in places you don't know what they're saying. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, you, you know, know they they look at you different and you kind of you, you, you know they're talking about you, you knew when guys in Charlotte were talking trash. <laughs> oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. All right, 100%. so, so let, let's come back stateside. Are you from Oklahoma? No, I'm from Delaware. I'm from my. Uh, I'm actually from Delaware. You're from. You're I'm East Coast, East Coast guy. Hey, hey, man. Yes, sir. All right. All yep. Right. Met my. I met my wife here when I played with the Red Hawks. That's the AAA team that was with the Rangers here. I uh, gotcha. Okay, and so yeah. So when you finished up your career, was she already living? Did she stay in? I mean, she she like never moved. That was her home. And and yep. that's where you uh you know you guys just decided to make a home as a family. You return, Correct. you f- you finish up your your pro career overseas, and uh, was was OK Fuel. It, the timing sounded like it could you could have. Did you start that up right before you finished pro ball or right after you finished pro ball? Uh, so I came back here and just started messing around, doing some lessons and. I had some calls from the minor leagues to come coach in minor leagues, but my kids were at the age of, you know, it's time for me to uh, teach teach them. Right. And uh, so I stayed here and, you know, the way to make money is teaching the game pretty much. Yeah. So uh, just went with my strengths and uh, I've been doing pretty good, actually. Um, not, not, being, not being from here was kind of tough, you know. Uh, if I was back in Delaware, it'd be easier to start up. So what I did was I went out and, you know, I went and sat through uh, three three other guys around here that had established their careers as far as giving lessons. And I just asked them if they wanted to go under, under one roof. And we all decided it was a good idea. And we, ever since, we've been, we've been trucking along pretty good. That's a uh... – that's a pretty good lesson, and you know we always. I, I I've got kind of a 
a standard question I always send coaches ahead of time about, you know, advice you would give somebody who's starting up a, a team or facility. And, and, I, and I think that's, you know, I didn't even ask that question, but it's such a good answer as far as a way to create, try and create some stability within a, you know, a, a newly started um, business is to go out and get some guys who are already doing their thing and, and like yep. I, I don't I don't know what agreement you guys created, but I know guys here locally who uh-huh. they don't own a building or they don't even you know, their their name's not on the lease, but they're 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 basically a you know, they're they sublease, if you will. They're they're just renting yeah. a cage. And I can imagine a scenario where you find three guys and say, Hey, why don't y'all come in here? And like, there's, you know, we'll give you a home. Was it, was it, right. was it something like that? Or was it, was it sort of like more, uh, uh official? Well, I kind of just, I, I knew for me to get more business, I would have to have get more people around me. And then once they saw what I taught and how I taught, and, you know, the way you're teaching certain things, I knew that I would get more clients from, Let's say you got I, I, we got two pitching coaches and two hitting coaches. Mm-hmm. Well, I knew the overflow from the pitching coaches would finally come across, uh-huh. and then you just then it just picks up, and then we start moving, and then you know we each get our own business, book of business, and we haven't had any issues ever. Honestly, it's been it's been good. But all of them played. One of them played for uh, the Rangers. Played. Uh, Played at Oklahoma. Two of them played at Oklahoma State. One of them played at Wichita State, and the other one was a catching guy at Oklahoma City. So, um, and they're still yeah, with you today. All still the with me today. That's awesome. Still with it. Yeah, it's it's awesome. It's a good bunch of dudes. Just, I mean, baseball guys. I mean, that's yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna do it, you know, you, you got to find baseball guys first of all, and not yeah. guys that you know. They don't have no egos. Our, we don't have any egos at our place, which is pretty tough to find in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, so it works, and you know we we build a pretty good business out of it. Honestly, I, I, I should. I always try to say this at the very beginning. If you guys want to, if you, listeners at home want to co- uh, connect with Cliff, you can find him uh, on Twitter at OK Fuel Athletics, uh, or over at the website. Oklahoma fuel athletics.com. Um, so definitely connect up, um, with cliff there. Um, that's, um, so, so you, you, you basically, you, you know, you go, you go rent a building, you throw some cages up, you're in business. Uh-huh. And, um, at some point, like where do the teams, where do the teams come from? Did you have teams day one or, or did that come slowly? Uh, it, it came slowly. We started doing lessons and then, you know, I got three boys. Uh, one of them is at University of Nebraska playing baseball. Uh, the other one is a sophomore, going to be a sophomore with offers from Arkansas, uh, OU, K State. Um, so he's pretty so, good. He, he's doing. He's going to be okay. Yeah, my other one. He went to Oklahoma State his first year, and then decided he wanted to transfer and went to Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Uh, this 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 year so he'll be he should be probably starting playing center field or second lead off guy um so what happened was I, I had three kids at the time i had two one was playing so i just pretty much switched that team over to us and i think we had another one so we had two teams at first and both of them i believe it, both of them my kids play for because i think he was six playing up and the other one was nine so uh, we just started those teams and started winning, and you know people started liking. They asked if they could bring their team on to to uh, be a part of what we're doing, and that's kind of how it went down. And we interviewed some coaches with some kids, and you know just pretty much how it started. And now we're like fourteen teams deep, and you know we're at the end of fall right now, so we're actually meeting with some new people who are wanting to come aboard. So we're hoping to add a couple more teams this, 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 uh, upcoming spring. That's, um, you, you know, that's a, that's a, I think a, um, sort of like, uh, um, one of the, 
one of the best ways to grow is to you find a guy who's doing his thing and he's doing a good job, but but maybe he needs a little more support. Maybe he needs a little more stability, and so you can recruit an entire team over. Um, are those are those teams younger teams usually that you do that with, and then they you, you try and have them grow um, in, yes. inside the yes. facility, or are they older teams? Well, yes, we, we we grow them inside our facility. We start them at a young age, and then when they turn fifteen and they get to be a threat, when they become freshmen is when we we start uh, giving coaches like high school qualified or guys that have played college ball, pro ball, and. They'll take the team over for three years. Is it, so we don't have a, we don't have a team at eighteen. We 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 turn them over to a Connie Mack team that my buddy runs. Ah, yeah, cool. And, and they play in that Connie Mack World Series. Yeah. So the younger teams so, are probably younger team, yeah. probably a dad run team. Yeah, it's a dad run team with a with a background in baseball. Dude, I mean, I'll... it's hard. It's hard to it's hard to uh, especially around here. It's hard to get coaches to put that much time into the younger ages because they got fall yeah. and they have spring. Whereas when you get to, for us, when you get to high school, we don't, we don't do fall ball. Too many football guys here. Yeah. People, um, do, there's this whole like corner of the internet that, that hates on dad coaches so much. Oh yeah. And, and I'm like, wait, I played for my dad. I, right. Exactly. You know what I mean? And y- your kid played for you. Like what's the problem? What's the problem? Right. You know what I mean? Like, like it's a uh, it's it. I think they go overboard with the with the bashing of dad coaches, man. So that you know, like, I, I there's bad ones. Oh, there's there, don't get me. There's bad ones out there, and we well, we try to get we stay away from that. So yeah. Like, well, I I, you know, I, I think the I think the hate comes from the guy who is a bitter dad who wants to take his kid his kid's not playing and he takes that kid and starts a team and sticks his kid at shortstop and hits him three hole yeah uh, so that's, st- st- that's probably one of that's 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 one of the groups of them yeah, yeah. but they don't they don't do anything they don't win well and, but but to disparage every every dad coach in the country over such a small group of people because that's not there's not that many of those um i i tell you if you can get some you know, you get a bunch of uh, uh, of fathers who who love the game, and more importantly, want to be around their kid and be around their kids' friends. Like, how yeah. how is that anything but positive? Well, I mean, it's it's it's. I don't find I don't find any issues with it. It's not that important at this yeah. age, honestly. They yeah, just, correct. For this age, it's, it's it's about getting them this experience and some good good abs and. Facing good pitching and facing good teams, you know that's going to be yeah. iron sharpens iron pretty yeah. much. So and, and having some fun while you're at it. Oh yeah, they do. They have a good time, and uh, there's a good family. It's a family family environment up there. They we, we know everybody. We know all the teams. We know all, pretty much everybody around here. Which uh, you know they're kind of trying to beat us and everything. And but we always have a good relationship. Our kids are good. Or, and uh, well respected, and that's part of the, the training that we give them. We try to give them become better men as well as baseball players. All right, so your older boys at Nebraska. I just pulled up the Nebraska website. You pull up the roster. He's literally the first guy listed on top of that roster. Uh, your your middle son is currently going through the process. He's got a bunch of offers out there. I think you mm-hmm. mentioned there's one more son, a, a younger boy. How old is he? He is. Tw- he's twelve. He's, he's probably the, he's probably the best hitter of them all. That <laughs> he's is. Le- he's a, he's my only lefty. That's no surprise, man. Those younger kids learn from big brothers. They get they oh, get yeah. they get they get beat on forever. they they get beat on by older brothers so much, and they usually end up the best. Yeah, older brothers and the friends they tear them up for sure, which is and part of the <laughs> pecking order right there. He's probably out there with middle brother. Playing, shagging, taking BP, and learning from kids who are pretty darn oh, good. He, yeah, he's been practicing. He's been practicing with my old team. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty. He's he's pretty. He's funny kid. He's pretty good. Good. They got good personality. They're good boys. And, and and then and then your poor wife, a house full of smelly guys, smelly boys. 
Oh, she lets us know. She lets us know for sure. <laughs> Don't think she doesn't. <laughs> well, well, she's a credible woman. I mean, she's uh, followed what I've done, and you can't ask for anything else better than that. And, and, and probably has to drive a lot of shuttles to baseball practice and has probably cleaned a million uniforms. That is correct. That is correct. <laughs> I think she knew what she was signing up for though when she married me. So yeah, yeah, I'm I'm sure. Um, all right, so let's let's talk about those older teams. You know, I I'm okay. a, I'm I'm a older I'm older. You know, I'm in the recruiting world. I'm not much on twelve U. Tell us about mm-hmm. tell us about um, you know the, those teams that are that are out on the road. You know, right. you're 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 kind of in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. I mean, I know Oklahoma uh, City is a big deal to you, but that's a long way from, you know, Atlanta. That's a long way from Jupiter. That's a, you know. So tell us about where where are you guys heading to to get in front of college coaches and and uh, you know just give us a little bit of a rundown on those older teams. Well, for us, I mean, we're we're in. A- I mean, it might sound like it's in the middle of nowhere, but we have OU, OSU, Texas, TCU, Wichita State, Arkansas. Uh, you have all those pieces right there in a 300-mile radius. That's big time. Which, for us, you know, what we preach is we don't really need to go anywhere because most of my families want to be able to see their kids. Uh-huh. So – if we can keep them in this region, our JUCO schools around here, we got Cali County in Kansas. We got Crowder in Kansas. We got some schools in Oklahoma, uh, Seminole, Eastern. So we have some good schools for these kids to go to. And we've been putting them in uh, pretty much my class that I had in 21. Everyone got a uh, scholarship to play baseball. Uh, our next one is coming up, which is – our 2024 group, and we got a kid going to our. Uh, we got a kid going to uh, Vanderbilt, pitcher. We got a shortstop going to OSU. Those are our two big guys right now off that team. And uh, this year we'll probably see some more recruiting happening. I think with the COVID and the and the portal, kind of slowed down the uh, high school recruitment. In my opinion. I uh, 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 I think you I think you might be right. I feel. I feel kind of bad for a lot of kids who, you know, four yeah. four years ago they would have been having a lot of action and things have been a little yep. bit quiet for them. Um, yeah. So, so we got pretty much as a uh, as travel ball, not just me, but everybody, kind of trying to figure out to revamp what how we're doing things, honestly, because uh, the high school recruiting is down. And that's what you sell to the parents as far as we're going to get your kids seen and stuff like that. So hopefully, you know, NCAA gets this thing in, under control and figures out how to – it's that one year. It's that one year where they grant everybody that extra year that's screwing everything up. Oh, so hopefully that will be fixed up. Don't get me started, but it it, it, yeah. it feels like they attempted to be the nice guy and, cre- and in, in an attempt to be the nice guy they created – a, ma- a massive problem. Multiple years of havoc. Unbelievable yeah. amounts of chaos. They threw a wrench in the whole system. And yep. no no offense to anybody that lost a year. Guess what? Guess what? I lost two years. You know why? Because school yeah. was hard. That's why. Oh, yeah. School was hard. I, I, I mean, life life is not fair. You know, we nope. should have just cut our losses back then because it's going gonna, it's gonna to continue to have a negative yeah, impact on the entire on the entire system for yeah. probably a few more years but you know I'm, I, so, I, so i'm geographically challenged i'm you know just a simple east coast guy so i pull up the map here and i'm looking i got oklahoma city right in the middle and and if you do you draw a nice circle hey man you got you got uh wichita not too far from you you got dallas not too far from you you got the Arkansas line not too far from you. You got uh, if you head west, you got Amarillo. You got Lubbock southwest. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. of course, Fort Worth right there. And then all of a sudden, you got how far is Kansas City from you? 
Uh, it's about four hours, so we got we're we're right there. Holy I mean, cow! For that. St. Louis is. I think I pulled up. St. Louis is is a little farther. That's going to be closer to seven or eight hours. But, um, but you're right. If you if you draw a circle, you you know, I I think you nailed it when you said three hours. I think I think the average student coming out of high school, uh, the the vast majority of them go to school within a three hour radius um, of home. And yeah, I know. I know that's what our parents want. And well, there's no, I mean, there should it, be no difference between an average player and a baseball player, right? They're they're, they're still correct. they're still average students, and you know when you start going five, seven, ten hours away, things become a little a little harder. Um, yes, it is and, definitely. I mean, I'm going I'm going from a thirty minute, forty minute drive to go watch and play to now I got to go six. Yeah. So it, it gets a little tough. I also got, you know, I'm in the Big Ten, which, you know, if I want to go watch him, I got everywhere I got to go, I got to fly. Where, whereas, yeah. where when he was with Oklahoma State, I could drive from here to Texas. So I guess we could have went to all those games. But yeah. you know, he did what he felt was best, um, and uh, we just pretty much, you know, no, we would never tell our kid not to do something. Yeah, go for it, right? Um, yeah. So. I mean, he felt more comfortable there. He knew his role more. Um, the fear of the unknown. Yeah, he, he didn't want to have to go through that again. So, well, well I, I think I think your uh, your you know your comment about that this three hour thing is just such an important reminder to all of us that it's like you do see, and I talk to guys who are going to fly all over the country, and good yeah. and good for good for them. That's great. Yeah. But, like, if you sit back, if you go back six months after that event that you had to fly across the country for and reevaluate, I, I think it would be a little bit eye-opening. And you say, oh, yeah. you know, you, you, you go back and you debrief your entire season and you go, okay, where did we where did we play that we got in front of the coaches that – had that moved the needle for our players that had the biggest impact you know and some of this might have to be you might have to look back two years three years mm -hmm. right um yeah. and, and do a do a thorough audit and i think that i think there's a lot of programs who if they if they did an audit of their last three years where they played and where their kids ended up going it might it might impact their decision making on the schedule making for next year and the year after. Um, oh yeah, oh I, I, yeah. I think I think that would be a exercise uh, worth doing for any for any coach. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. on an honest evaluation, an honest audit of the last three years. Because you know what, it's not just hey we got to get there. Hey, we got to pay for it too. Yeah, we, we got to pay for yep. it. You know, and uh, mm -hmm. time out, time away from home costs money. Uh, yeah, that's correct. That's an interesting thing. I, I tell you what, that's I don't I don't care if we hit on anything else of of any interest or value. I think if if a coach hears this and has been listening for twenty eight minutes and they they hear that one point, I think uh, that'll be uh, well worth listening. Um, yeah, but, and I mean, pretty much. I mean, I talk to all my kids once they go to college. They come back. They usually come back and. Uh, around Thanksgiving and then Christmas, and they always come up to the facility and I always ask them, you know, the ones that go far away. I'm like, how you doing? You know, you know, and I, you know, number one thing they miss is being able to see the parents, the home cooking, mm -hmm. the, the laundry, the money. The, I mean, being able to just pop in and say what's up. I mean, yeah. a lot of those kids love that point of it. And the ones that are far away, like I have some kids that are at San Diego University. Um, that love it, but do miss that piece. Yeah. So, um, for sure, it's it's just you know I played close when I played. I went to the University of Delaware, and it was thirty minutes from my house, so it was pretty easy for me. Mm -hmm. To anything I needed, I could go home, and you know we preach that to our kids. We make sure we put that in our head. That, you know, if you do this, you go this far away. Then, you know, these are these are some things that you need to look at. And, you know, we kind of we kind of go through it with them a lot. And, you know, since we've done it for so long and we've been through it already one time and the change has come and now we're trying to make our adjustments to what has happened as far as the NCAA is going. And I, when you say it benefited, it only benefited those seniors, honestly, that could come back. Everybody else got screwed. Correct. 
cr- cr- I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. I, 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 I was yeah, vocal you, from the very beginning. I thought it was a terrible, terrible decision by the NCAA mm-hmm. from day from the drop. Yeah, I mean, you should have you should have offered it. Like, in my opinion, what I was thinking was you offered to everybody. You have a decision. We will give you this year. You can either repeat, and you won't get penalized. Or you can move on. You have the decision. Yeah. Right? So that way, if you decided to move on, then that was your decision. If you decide to stay back, then you're right back where you, you know, you're, you're back where everybody else is. You don't lose anything. Yeah. Not a, not a, two, hey, you know what? Great idea. Two, two years too late. Or, or yeah, exactly. Exactly. Maybe, maybe more. But I mean, the fact that they didn't even think that through is the, is the mind boggling thing. What the backup was going to be allowing just one, one graduating class being able to stay caused all this. Cor- correct. Now, yeah. And now you got twenty-six-year-old seniors. Oh yeah, my son was shoot. He just turned. He just turned eighteen last year and was playing with some twenty-four and twenty-five-year-olds. Uh-huh. And I was, and I and I was sitting there. I'm going, son, you do know, like I was in double A at that age. <laughs> this kid in college. <laughs> I'm like I'm in double A at 25 years old, dude. I'm like you're playing with. I mean, so I mean, it. it just, and the it reality just is, and Rav, for you high school kids, listen. If you're not, if your phone's not ringing. I mean, yeah. like, don't be that surprised, right? Because if you're a college coach, I mean, if your average age of your team could be 21 and a half or 22 years old, of course, that's an advantage. Like, oh yeah. The older, the bigger, the stronger, the better. You know, listen, mm-hmm. seven, seven, a 17 and a half or 18 year old is not as strong as a 22 year old, 23 year old man. It's just not. No. It's just a no. it's a different it's a different animal. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. 100%. Yep. <laughs> and we 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 learned, we learned it. So, we take that knowledge and we pass it on to our other kids that are below them and say, you know, listen, if you think you're going to go here and play as a freshman, it's time to put some weight on pretty much. You, you got you to offset everything the age wise by getting bigger pretty much. Getting stronger, getting faster. I mean, and if not, at least you put the work in, you'd be a stud. So Yeah, for sure. Well, you, you know, you mentioned a few minutes ago that obviously a big reason why the parents do this type of baseball is so they can get in front of um, – you know, the college coaches and everybody has that D one dream, but have, have the parents, have you seen the parents and not only your organization, but the teams you you're playing against every weekend. Do you think the parents have sort of adjusted their expectations to match the reality of what's going on? Um, so I, me personally, I think this year was a opening eye opener for most yeah. of them. Um, some of the tournaments that we used to, the big tournaments that we used to go to, and you'd see about 50 to 100 scouts. Now you're seeing about 25 and 30. I mean, it's it's uh, it's definitely, especially when you build it up as much as we did, mm. and then come to see, come to see what happened as far as how many people were in the stands, uh, was eye opening for me as well this year. So this year, kind of, we saw it pretty good, um, but for us. We we have built a relationship. We've sent kids to certain schools and around here and built a re- reputation. Whereas every single tournament that we're in, we have the same five schools following us. It's Kansas State, it's OU, it's OSU, it's Wichita State, and it's Te- and who's the other one? It's Arkansas. So we got those five schools that every single time we play, they're usually there, which is good. One of the interesting things I've heard about. Uh, from this past summer was a lot of those schools that maybe used to um, be at that at that travel ball event they were sending mm-hmm. they were sending guys to the college summer leagues to scout, oh, yeah. to scout players but the reality oh, yeah. is even if they're not there if 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 they are filling in a, a roster or filling those roster spots with juco and or transfer portal guys, well, like mm. they probably don't need to be on the road as much going to see a yeah. high school travel team. You know, it's just the reality. Exactly. Yeah. And so, like, it's not just us that is trying to make the adjustment. It's these tournament directors as well. I mean, for them to sell you uh, 
all these colleges and not being there. It's kind of that's kind of hurting them too. So I'm 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 anxious to see what they're going to do as far as their adjustments. But I know as far as ours go, we're going to get more uh, more online stuff and more at the schools that the kids want to go to. Like mm-hmm. I'm sending all our kids to all their camps yeah. as far as the summer goes or this this winter. You know just pick a school like as a freshman sophomore they pick one or two and then, yeah uh sophomore junior they're like two or three and they just go and they stay on their they stay on their radar and you know the coaches reach out to me and say hey we're having camp here send your guys and you know we, we we have a good relationship when it comes to that so we get them in front of those people all the time so yeah um it's just now it's up to them to you know show them what they got yeah, I think I think we're, we've seen a resurgence of the college camp, um, for sure. Yeah, for sure. You know, and well, you, you got th- that NIL money now, so a lot of kids, me personally, I don't think they're going to leave. I don't think they're going to go right into pro ball the way they got pro ball now because the pro ball you don't even play as a you know your first year. You get drafted out of college, you got to go down and spend some time in the in the uh, golf roast league. That's a uh, you- that's a whole another interesting dynamic of this thing it's brutal. that brutal. I feel, it's it's like it seems so obvious to me but i feel like we're gonna yeah. like look up in about five years and the powers that be also known as the ncaa oh. it, they're gonna get golly man i can't i can't believe this is i can't believe things are so bad and i'm like wait you create you created free agency and yeah and, and uh and paying players and and you thought this was going to be a good thing like well it, it, honestly i honestly think it's i think the ncaa is they're going to make out on this because the nil money i mean think about it you, you, you're i mean i was i played in college and i played in pro ball right so when i went to when i went and played pro ball i got drafted out of high i got drafted out of college and went straight to short season a ball well now they're just going down to either Florida or or Arizona and just hanging out until a spot opens up on a team that's already established. So they're down there just playing scrimmages and working out. Mm-hmm. Whereas when I got drafted, I went and played like 56 games in a half season. Well, now they, they moved the draft all the way back to the all-star game, which is crazy to me because now those kids that they these people have banked on signing as a freshman coming in freshman – Knew they were they weren't going to leave until after they were twenty one years old. Well, now these kids are turning twenty one before the draft, and, and and being able to go to the draft. So that pushed back on the draft. Like I think the young kid out of Texas Tech was twenty one. He would have been able to stay another year, but since they pushed the draft back to the All Star game and it, his birthday happened before the draft, he was able to sign and go, which is killing college programs as well, honestly. Yeah, there's a but, there, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of things at play that oh, that man. that that I, sw- I swear that feel it feels obvious it feels obvious yeah. but like you know man maybe I'm just cynical but I, maybe the maybe the NCAA just like they don't maybe they don't care about college baseball all that much I don't know I, I don't know what they do <laughs> honestly they they've messed up a lot of things that I've seen around here I mean as far as now that I'm starting to pay attention to it, um, but I, I think college baseball is freaking still amazing. Like I'm, I'm really, I'm, I, I get more excited to go watch that nowadays than I do pro ball until it's the World Series. Well, that that's the that's the craziest part is is like the on yeah. field the on field um, portion has become uh, has become so such a good product. And it's like, hey, oh, yeah. why don't, why don't, why are we trying to like mess it up? Like, why, yeah, I, why don't, don't we, know. why don't we embrace it? We've got this little ember, right? The ember is burning. Why don't we, why don't we try to grow this thing? Because it, it has so much potential. It's uh, yeah. Well, I, 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 I tell you what, if I'm looking at it now and I'm getting nil money to what I'm hearing they're getting, shoot, I'm going to college. Uh huh. I get better. I get you get better meals. You get better living, hundred uh, percent, and they they give you all kinds of stuff. You get the Pro Bowl, you don't get any of that. Man. It's like you're on your own. Here you go. Yeah, and you, you don't get any, and you don't get paid. Yeah, you don't get paid. So it's it's smarter, honestly, to go to college and get some NIL money and make a few hundred grand there and 
shoot. I mean, these guys are making like a hundred grand for appearance. It's crazy. We, we, uh, yeah, we, we have opened up a, a whole, a whole set of, um, uh, just, uh, crazy situations that I'm <laughs> like, it's like Pandora's box just opening yeah. up. Um, it definitely made it definitely it definitely makes it inter- <laughs> interesting. Let me say, makes the puzzle a little bit harder. Hey, well, listen, I, I want to be respectful of your time. I'm looking up and seeing we we've been at this for a little while. We we okay. um we we've definitely talked a lot about sort of like NCAA recruiting type of stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. You you inadvertently answered one of my sort of standard questions earlier when we were talking about um you know some of those. Some of the uh, some of the advice you'd give somebody who's starting up by bringing in bringing in a crew, I love that answer. I think that was such a such a such a good thing to to consider. But I, I definitely want to end with asking um, this this final question that usually will sort of open up a whole other discussion. Um, and, and so I'm going to skip right to it and say, what what's one change? Uh, if I gave you the magic wand here, what's one change you think could be made to travel baseball? that would have the biggest positive impact? Oh, the biggest positive impact would be no 8 a.m. games. That'd be the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. Yes. Yes. We can get rid of, we can get rid of them 8 a.m. games. That'd be great. Um, <laughs> me personally in the travel ball, um, three three games in one day is a lot. Anything over that is, is ridiculous to ask uh, kids to play. I mean, in my opinion. As far as I, I, I agree looking, with you, looking at an average major league game about three and a half hours, four hours, where you get three games back to back to back, and where you get in these games or these tournaments where if you keep winning, you keep playing, you're playing three games, you're playing like six hours. Yeah. Oh no, I've seen so, I've, I mean, I've, I've I've seen I've seen teams that have to play five and six games in a 24 hour uh, span to win a to win yeah. an event. Right, and you're just like yeah. and, and the eight a.m. thing and the multiple the the three plus games in one day are to yeah. me to me this is you can answer it in the same way. You say, "Have you ever seen the best players in the world, the most finely tuned athletes, doing that thing?" In this case, it's an 8 a.m. game. No, I've never seen an 8 a.m. game from the best players no. in the world. Okay, have you ever no. seen the best players in the world play three, four, five, six games in a 24-hour span? No, I've never seen that. Well, then why are we asking high school kids to do it? Yeah. Why are we asking? Why are we asking? Why are we asking 12-year-olds to do that? If yeah. if Derek Jeter didn't play three games in a day, then why are we asking you know your 12-year-old to do it? Doesn't make sense. Correct. Yeah, I, I, it's watered down a lot of them. Um, whereas they'll let anybody in, which is not, you know, if you're if, if you're if you're trying to get kids better, honestly, um, you put the best against the best. Yeah, and then you you, you kind of have your different levels. Whereas you know, I'm not. My kids aren't getting better if they go out there and beat you 15 to nothing. You know, it's like BP. They're just taking BP. Yeah. So if well, they can do the quality and get the teams where it's like, you know, everybody's on the same page. You know, you're running tournaments like that, and there's not as many teams. I'm good with that. If we played four of the best teams and we saw four of the best arms in the country every single weekend, I know my kids are getting better, win or lose. Yeah. Well, so, here, here's I one mean, thing I would I would challenge you. A lot of the a lot of times we'll get. And when I ask this question about what would you change, a lot of times we get things that are out of people's control, out of the control of the coach. Um, uh-huh. Playing four games in a day, it, it at at the end of the conversation, it, it it is in your control. So I would challenge you to like, especially because you know that fourth game, we don't have anybody else that can pitch, or maybe we got to throw we got to throw the second baseman who hadn't pitched all year. Well, now you're setting mm-hmm. that kid up for injury. I would challenge yeah. you to just like, I like I give you permission to walk away, like if, if and if your parents get mad at you, tell them to call me. Say, hey, this guy on the yeah. this guy on the podcast, he gave me permission to to just <laughs> listen. We got we had a good run this weekend. We just finished our third game. I'm not going to pitch 
second baseman, little Johnny, because I don't want to risk his arm and his future. Yeah. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to pack up and we're going to head to the Dairy Queen where we're going to get some ice cream. All right. So way to go. And we'll, <laughs> so I give, I give you permission to do that. Um, and I, cause that is in, in your control. And I know some of these events, man, they're going, they're going to back you into a corner and some of your parents mm-hmm. might back you into a corner too. And, and, um, uh, I would, I would feel, I would feel better about just, you know, shutting it down before that fourth game, going to get some pizza and yep. ver- versus, versus putting kids in a risky situation. Um, oh, we've, 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 we've walked out before as you would because of the weather. I mean, yeah. Um, well that's, that's a, often a big time. That's a big way how you get into that circumstance. Cause you know, listen. I know that tournament wants to provide as much value as they can, but a little rain that first day backs everything up, and now all of a sudden, you know, you 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 get out a pool player, you end up in the losers bracket and start winning. Now all of a sudden, you, oh, you see that championship on the horizon. It only takes you five games today to win it. You're like, what? What are we doing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, who, who puts this together is what number one crosses my mind. Honestly, they they honestly didn't play the game. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of these guys that you know run these things. I mean, yeah, I, you know, I think sometimes yes. I think sometimes yes, and sometimes I think it comes like sometimes when you're just like drawing it up. You know, you're sitting at the kitchen table and you're you're drawing up this event. And you go, hey, you know, we're charging this much money. I, I want to provide these people with as much value as they can. But and I can I can appreciate that. But also, it's like. You, you got to draw a line somewhere. It's like got to. We can't. Got we can't. To. We can't put a kid in in a in a circumstance where we could get kids hurt. Um, and right. That, and that could come from hey maybe maybe that kid, you know he he hadn't he hadn't thrown a pen all year. Maybe maybe today's not the day to go seven. You know. Oh um, yeah, hundred percent. Like, if you're going seven, if you're going seven now, you're. You're asking a lot of these kids. That's so our guys. We run them out there about three or four innings, man. We run them out about three or four and try to keep them fresh all summer. So, is there is the there anything there. besides that? You know, you hit on some good couple couple really important pieces. Is there anything else that you think uh, could could make a little positive impact on the travel ball? Oh, it's just for me. It's the only thing I see that's that's bad about it is just the attitudes. These kids think they're they've already made it. A lot mm-hmm. of them have already made it. And they have no idea. They have no idea what's out there besides their yeah. their travel ball experience or you, their town or whatever like that. How do you how do you keep that in check on your own teams? Is nah, there... they don't. Um, you just show them. Yeah. You know, I I show them some guys. I'm like, look, here's some here's some Latins. Here's some Latin. Look at what they're doing. Look at the look at what they're using. Mm-hmm. Or as you're sitting at home and you're doing this and this and this, these guys aren't playing. It's hotter there than it is here, and yeah. they're out there getting to work in. So, yeah, that's I mean, a... you got to understand there's guys out there that are working every single day just like this that are going to eventually take your job if you don't put put the work in. So, mm-hmm. you know, I just remind them and, you know, we, we try to get the kids that don't do that. Um, we have a pretty, pretty uh, serious way of our kids and how we hold up, hold our kids responsible and stuff like that. And yeah. it's, that's not that what they want to do. That's no big problem to us. Like we don't. If that's not what you want to do. There's other teams that do it different than us. Yeah. So it, it, it's pretty much known around here how what type of kids we we want, and uh, we we stick to our guns as far as that go. Just act like you've been here, pretty much. Yeah. That 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 is a uh, perfect statement to end on. Um, if if anybody's still listening, I'll repeat it. It's Oklahoma Fuel Athletics dot com and at Twitter uh over at OK Fuel Athletics. Um Cliff, I appreciate you coming on, man. I want you to hang tight one second. Do you have do you have any final one final word, one final statement before um before we end of the recording? I don't. Just uh-huh. try to keep the game going, man. I'm trying to keep these boys keep this next generation. All right. Um the way we want it. Uh, Keep the game right. That's great. This was fun. Hang on one second. I'm just going to stop the recording, but don't hang up. Okay, Richard.